But in the past, you know, there just hasn't been any recovery infrastructure in Lewis County at all. None. Yet it's been the number one problem here, you know, that everyone talks about. I think there's a lot of people out there that deny, you know, how bad our situation is in our community and in our, in our county. Uh, I think we need to make them aware of, of how bad it is. Uh, in return, you know, be there for the families and, and, and the addicts that want to get their lives back on track. You know, again, mention the children. We need to be there, you know, not just for the family members, the, the older ones that it affects, but, you know, even, even the children and do what we can to, uh, you know, to put this, to put it at the forefront uh, of our community because, you know, it's going to overtake our community if we're not careful. So we need to do what we can, you know, to get it back. I have seen pill transactions take place in, in open, broad daylight here in Lewis County, downtown, Front Street. Watched it happen from the same location umpteen times while I was babysitting my grandchildren. It was high school students pulling up, person running out in their robe, transactions would happen, and they were off to school. Early morning, saw it happen. What we're about 13,000 people in this county, and, and I can't say that there's not one family. I haven't found one yet that says they don't have a cousin, an uncle, a mother, a brother who's not dealing with this direct issue. So I would think that the support there and the understanding to get something done is, is there. It uh, has greatly affected our community. Uh, I don't know a family that's not not been affected by this epidemic. It's it's hit here. It's not only here. It's it's everywhere. But you know, it's uh, it's in our community whether we want to want to believe that or not. But it's it's here and it's something we've got to face. I started uh, my law enforcement career in 1997. Uh, at that time, I don't think we was uh, facing a drug ep epidemic like we are today. It was common then and uh, to find a six pack of beer, a bag of dope. Uh, obviously today we're dealing with uh, syringes, uh, crack pipes, and uh, more importantly, uh, an individual that is violent and is willing to do whatever it takes to uh, keep feeding this addiction, whether that be to harm someone, harm law enforcement, they're willing to take that risk. Marijuana now is not a restable fence. We side them, let them go. That's where the that's where the drugs have went to now, you know, and uh, it's just went downhill. Out of an average of about sixty-five to seventy county inmates, I would say all but three to four that are just failure to appear in court or uh, failure to show up on a warrant, unrelated to drugs but the rest is probably a 95, 96% drug-related charges. It's a no-winning battle. There's too much money to be made in it. You take them off the street, there's somebody else. And, you know, you get to the drug courts. Good thing, bad thing, I don't know how you want to look at it, you know, but my opinion is when, if you just put the user in there, that's fine. But when you put the people that sell them in there, the only thing you're doing, I think, in my opinion, is give them a license to resell. That's what they do. You know, they uh, they just get another license, just keep right on selling. Yeah, they may, you know, the guy that's going to make money off selling drugs is the guy that don't use them. And you put them in drug court, now they're really going to make money. It's sad when you see, you know, the visitations that we have and the, and the young children in there who's getting trained to see their mother and father on a regular basis in a jail. And mom and dad explain to when they're coming home, and they're, and they're, and it's also the grandma and grandfather, who's from a different generation, is having to deal with their own son's issue, and it's just spiraling out of control. People like to uh, define it as being a war, and 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 that's probably a fair assessment. But we're uh, we're fighting this war with three or four guys against hundreds here in in Lewis County. Now it could just be that I'm more aware of some of it, but it appears to me in the last, I would say 15 years or so, that that there is more drug use, pills, 
prescription pill use uh, than, than there was in the past and a younger audience that's participating. It's a, it's a process that can lead one to lose hope, you know, as they watch their loved one get further and further along in the disease. Um, I think it affects families and children especially when there's a lack of stability in the home, when parents are using or abusing uh, alcohol and drugs. And I think as, it, as uh, the drug abuse continues through generations, it's just, it becomes kind of a way of life for folks and it just, there's no stability at all and that affects everything. It affects, it affects everybody in the community then when, when you don't have stable family family life, um, or any kind of structure around that. It's bad everywhere, don't get me wrong. You know, here it might be pain pills, and you know, Arizona, it might be methamphetamine. Arizona, you might have 80 AA meetings, you know, in a five block radius. Whereas here, you might have two or three a week now, which last year, you know, you, you wouldn't have any. So, you know, you know, that might bring the statistics, you know, up or down for this county. Uh, from what I've seen, yeah, it's horrible county, kind of but the drugs are everywhere. You know, your geographical change ain't gonna happen. If you're not happy being sober, you'll find something to use. When you're trying to help folks in any way, whatever it is, is that it is essential that that no one involved comes across judgmental, where a person feels as though they're being condemned and uh, uh, looked on as a failure when in fact, uh, what, what they need from us, and especially from the Christian community, is they need a loving compassion that says, let me help you up. Everything starts at home. And uh, to just talk to your children about it and uh, make them aware of the dangers of it. And uh, don't be afraid to, to call law enforcement or someone to talk about concerns with your child. It's not that we're gonna run out and arrest them or anything of that nature, but if we can you know, head it off before it gets serious, then that, by all means, that's what we're here to do. When I wanted to get help, there's no help. I tried to get into rehab. I mean, I literally got the phone book and called every place I could, told them my story, and they're all like, you got a medical card? No. You got $10,000? No. We can't help you. I mean, I literally begged and pleaded. I said, look, I'm going to die if I don't get help. And it was just like a joke. But when you saw the need, and that it's genuine, and when you see the scope of it, and you have to realize, whether it's with the children or with a drugs and alcohol, you're never going to combat it to the point that there is not a problem, that there will not be something you've got to constantly work at. And you have to take each success as it comes, knowing that there's going to be lots of them that will not be successful with all your effort at this moment. These are our neighbors. This is someone's child. This is someone's mother. This is someone's father. Uh, and they're not going, they're not lifers. They're going to be out. They're going to be our neighbors. How do we want to put them out? I can, I can treat them horrible in there. We could lock them down, uh, give them the bare minimum to stay alive. But I'm teaching them, I'm modeling to them what to do to others when they get out. And they're going to come out upset, angry, and the family's going to get that in. Their children's going to get that in. So it kind of escalates from there. So I'm trying to say, hey, to the, to the individuals in the county, I'm trying to do what I can to show that people do care. If you're willing to try, we're willing to give you a chance. If you're not, you're not, okay. But for the ones who are, we're here to give you a chance and we're going to treat you with respect. We're going to treat you like a human being, like you would want others to treat you. If you mess up, we're not going to hit the whole 20. We'll deal with that individual and make him pay and then when he's done, we can put him right back in the program. But a lot of them want to see him really punish, 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 but it, but they got to remember that's going to be their neighbor mm -hmm. when they get out, and it's very soon. We release a lot, so hopefully these guys will get out, feel better about themselves, go out and get some, 
employment opportunities. The thing about it is, is when people do drugs, is once they get off of them, their friends, who they think are their friends, is the people they go back to. Well, guess what they're still doing is drugs. They're in a no-win situation. They're not going to quit. The only way that you're going to get these people off these drugs is you're going to get them in a different environment than what they're used to. The cycle of drug abuse and, and uh, addiction and, and alcoholism is a whole mindset. It's a whole lifestyle, you know, and, and the kids have to break out of that. They have to be around people who are not using or abusing. They have to hear the message, you know, that, that this isn't happening in everybody's home because they think so. That's what they're used to. So, you know, they think their home is just like everybody else's, but that's not the case. So they have to get, to get away from that, get some stability. They can get it through school, through places like the Boys and Girls Club, and then through caring adults around them and, and their faith communities. So they have to be surrounded with that strong, strong base of support. And we just need to do what we can as community leaders and families and, and things and try to pull people together and, and, and help you know, slow the process and even get rid of some of it if, if we can. And I think the coalition is a good thing. I think it's, uh, we've had, you know, some, some community leaders and, and people that's, that's been involved that is uh, really wanting to, to put an end to this. And uh, I think anything that we can do to help is, is uh, something we need to do. It's just, we've got to start somewhere. And I just think that this is a start. You know, where it works or not, we'll see, but it's a start. I mean, we've got to do something for Lewis County to try to help. A lot of people don't get a second chance, and I got my second chance. I took it both hands, and they were here today. Just walk into Harrow, now somebody die right there, you just walk around them, you know, it don't bother you a bit, you know, uh, being in them kind of places. And I had a lot of good friends die of the disease, because it was very, very bad. But uh, for myself, it's for me, Menders, I, I can't say enough what it means to me to be straight today. Well, your know, recovery takes you from being a taker to being a giver. And uh, that's one of the things that the 12 steps do. For years, I was guess I was what you call a functional addict, but I reached the point where I was, uh, you know, totally helpless, totally hopeless, you know, uh, bankrupt in every, you know, way of the word, you know, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional. Um, and basically, I just ended up in the end where I couldn't do anything. I ended up in a state of dereliction where I was uh, basically just a bum. And, uh, you know, I, everyone else saw it going on around me, but it took, like I say, a great deal of pain and desperation for me to see it, you know, in myself. No matter what happens, you know, I'm not going to use. You know, you can't get into recovery and have a solid foundation if you have any reservations. You know, like, well, if my girlfriend leaves me, I'm going to get high. You know, uh, I don't know if I'll be able to make it, you know, if uh, grandma dies. You know, all those things are tragic and painful. Uh, but, you know, the addict has to have a made up mind that no matter what, you know, I'm not going to use.